Hello everyone, this is Dr. Tamisha Dennis of The Modern Smile and this is Dentist Live. I'm trying to name it Dentist Live because I think that's the most appropriate title for this um, thing is um, just me live as a dentist um, answering questions and everything like that. If you're new to coming on this and chatting with me, make sure that you say hello because I'd love to say hello to everyone. And also um, make sure to get your questions going. Um, I have a little less questions and comments this week. So um, if you start asking questions right away, I'll be able to get to everybody's questions and comments this week. Um, very interesting. Um, I'm in South Florida and it's nice and cold today. So I'm wearing my fake sweater today. So um, I'm going to, hello. I wanna say your name right. Hi, Rehab, Femi. Hi, how are you guys? All right, so um, I wanted to talk about something um, really briefly that um, was interesting to me. I was looking at another dentist YouTube channel and hi, Golden Goods. I know, it's really cold. Nice to see you again. Um, and. The dentist, and this is one of my pet peeves, this is probably one of the things that um, I want to do in the future in the YouTube channel is basically address some of the things I see on the internet that are kind of sketchy, that I'm like, why do, why do people say that? Why do people do that? So I'm on this guy's um, dental um, YouTube channel, which there's not a lot of us out there, and he was talking about something that I thought was really misleading, which is how people should never get crowns. So the title of the video was like, how why patients should never get crowns and never get crowns specifically on their front teeth. And his justification was that if you get crowns on your front teeth because you have um, crowns on your top teeth and you have natural teeth on the bottom, it's gonna grind your teeth away and then it's gonna cause wear and tear and all of that good stuff. And it's gonna damage your teeth. And I was like, how misleading is that? Because all throughout the video, all he was talking about is making crowns. And the once you click on it, and then so me, silly me, I get into the comment section, and then I start answering questions from the other people who was at, who are asking him questions, which I thought were was even more interesting. So um, um, I don't know if any of those people that I was answering, I was not trying to be a creep. I'm not. I wasn't trying to like get on there and do something else. But I thought that was really interesting that you know. Sometimes, and I think that this is very prevalent when it comes to YouTube in general, and of course, with it, when it comes to dentists, that's also very prevalent, is the whole idea of kind of leading people into thinking um, that they can get away with not doing anything when they really need to do something. Um, I am going to be doing a series of videos coming up talking about um, what people are afraid of at the dentist and how there are different strategies that you can do without telling you my whole video. There's different strategies that you can do yourself to make yourself more comfortable at the dentist. So you're not as scared and you're not kind of going in there. Um, one of the videos that I'm doing coming up soon is going to be um, about dental anesthetics. So I know if you guys have any other suggestions as far as what's good things that people are afraid of when it comes to going to the dentist, obviously the needle, obviously the sound of the drill. Um, I did, Femi, yeah, Fem, Femi, Femi King next. Yeah, so any things like that, you know, let me know what do you guys think is the scariest part about going to the dentist. I know the, the worst part about going to the dentist is the money, and that's something that I talk about all the time with my patients. I have no dis, disillusions, illusions, if I'm saying that incorrectly. I have no illusions about how people feel about going to the dentist. I, if you watch my YouTube channel at all, you know that I've had plenty of dental work. Um, Hey, hi, Hatch. Hi, Mary. Um, so I, I'm always sympathetic to that. I guess I have my first question. It says, did you have braces as a teen? No, I did not. My married name is Dennis, and it sounds like dentist. So I was just born to be a dentist. My teeth are straight-ish. I have my little issues. Obviously, everybody thinks that their teeth have something even when they're perfect. I think that doesn't go just with teeth, that has to do with everything. But I've never had braces. I have a strange little gap. You can see it right there. I have a strange little gap on the side that I always consider doing um, clear aligners for to close, but I never have quite done it um, simply because 
uh, it doesn't bother me that much. So I just, just haven't done it at all. So, um, yeah, um, I do clear liners in my office a lot. And um, I did that video about Smile Direct Club um, about what are the, the things that it can fix and what it can't fix. But I'm going to tell you, it's not just just to continue that conversation. The, the things that Smile Direct Club cannot do are also the same things that don't work with just regular clear aligners. And um, in general, it's just to get a hard movement done, like a tooth that's really crooked or a tooth that's really high up or a tooth that's crossed over another tooth, sometimes it's hard. I've actually done quite a few patients that their front teeth were on top of each other and it turned out beautifully, just not in the time always that they kind of say that they think that it's going to come out. So I always tell people that you should really, really make sure um, that you're a candidate before you invest money. And then, I mean, I'm a different, I, I can't say I'm a different kind of dentist. Every dentist has their own thing. But with my patients, I'm really going to work until you're happy. So even if they say um, it's this much period of time for your, your teeth to get straight and it doesn't happen, I'm still going to help you. I'm going to still do everything that I can to make sure that you get the results that you want, no matter how long it takes. And a lot of times it's just adults. You just don't want to have brackets and wires. So if you're willing to spend a little extra time, and it's not always time-wise, if you're willing to spend a little extra time in aligners, then, then you're going to get the results that you want. So as long as you're patient and you're realistic, I make such a big deal about people being realistic about what they're going to accomplish with their, their aligners and that sort of thing. So as you can see, I'm trying to keep this five o'clock spot or five-ish spot. I'm a little early. I figure if you're in your car driving home, you can listen to me talk. And then my knee grow XXX. Hello, how are you? Did you always know you wanted to be a dentist? Are you still happy in your career? Um, thank you, Rehab. <laughs> um, I'm, I love being a dentist. There are a lot of challenges with being a dentist. Um, the reason that I decided to become a dentist is not a common story. The first time I ever went to the dentist, I was 12 years old. And I remember going to the dentist and my parents were not one of those parents that kind of like stay in the room with you. They went alone. They gave me a shot and I was numb and I was, I was like, okay. And I just remember sitting in the chair and I was thinking to myself, Hey, I think I want to do this for a living. Before that point, I thought I wanted to be a teacher and, um, I decided I want to be a dentist. And then what happened after that? I just kept saying, I want to be a dentist. I want to be a dentist. And then I went to high school. I told everybody I wanted to be a dentist. And then when I went to college, I majored in biology and I was the president of the dental association. And then I went to dental school. And every time I found something new about dentistry, I just loved it even more. So it, it was easy for me to keep going. I love using my hands. I am a people person. So interacting with people is easy for me. I, I like to connect with people. That That's something that just is easy for me to do. What's my least favorite part about my career? My least favorite part is that there's pain involved. Most of the time when people come and see me, they're not happy. They don't want to be at the dentist. The first thing that everybody says to me when they see me is, I don't want to be here. <laughs> and I understand that. And obviously, I don't look like a dentist. So most of the time when people meet me, I call myself Dr. Dennis. I don't do it to be... Um, haughty or like have a big ego. The reason I call myself Dr. Dennis is simply because people think I'm the assistant most of the time. So if I don't say hi, I'm Dr. Dennis, they won't even pay attention to me because they don't know who they're talking to. So once I start talking and they realize I know what I'm talking about, they're like, oh, you're the dentist. It's like, hey. And then half the time they're asking me how old I am and all of this stuff because most people think I'm much younger than I really am. Please nobody ask me how old I am. Maybe I might tell you. Okay, what is my least favorite? The fact that pain, um, the fact that money is a, is a prohibitive factor. Um, another thing I don't like about dentistry is sometimes because people are uncomfortable and in pain, they project that in a lot of different ways. Some people project that as anger, some people project that as an attitude. But listen, I'm a very difficult person to get upset with. I, I usually am very good with kind of like weeding out things and getting to the root of what people's issues are. Um, what about British tea? <laughs> um, hi, Dwight. Um, Dwight says, thank you, Dwight. <laughs> Does every root canal require a crown? The answer is yes, 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 yes. 
If you get a root canal, you should get a crown. There are only very, very specific situations in which you can have a root canal that you don't need a crown. For example, and please don't hold me to this, example, your front teeth. If your tooth was in really good shape before the front teeth only, if your teeth were in really, sorry, sometimes I get distracted and I look out the window, um, are really good shape and you have a root canal, you can really just have the root canal if you want to get away with not, but you are doing a risk. I don't know if people get annoyed with this, but I love to give myself as a great example. I was in dental school at a root canal, long story short, and then the next day, like I was sitting in class, it was eight o'clock, I was sitting in class in dental school, I was a second year dental school, school student, and I think it was a bazooka. If anybody remembers what is a bazooka candy, but it was a hard pink candy, and I bit in that thing, and it literally cracked my tooth in half. I had a root canal the day before, and it cracked my tooth in half. And literally, that's why I have one of the implants that I have right now because I cracked my tooth that quick. So can you imagine if you, I've met patients, literally, they've had a root canal 15 years ago, 15 years ago. And I was like, you need a crown. And they said, no, I've been fine. I don't need a root. I don't need a crown. I don't need a crown. It's been fine. And it breaks. I didn't put anything on them. I just said, listen, you need to have a crown. You have a root canal. Thank you, Dwight. That was a great question. Thank you, Femi. I'm beautifully young. Well, thank you. Every time I get older and older, I'm like, ugh. Um, Ritik Verma, when would one need a root canal? It's it's so crazy to me that people have needed, people get work and they don't know what it is. I have a video, sorry, I'm sitting in my studio space. I was trying to see if I had anything, um, any root canal models with me. I keep most of them at the office. But when you need a root canal is when your cavity gets so large that it goes into the nerve. I'm going to give you the short version. Everybody knows what enamel is. Enamel is the white part. After you go from enamel, you go into dentin. Dentin is the next part. It's kind of a yellowish color. It's on, it's supposed to be yellow. Then the next layer in is the pulp. The pulp is where your nerve is. So if you have a cavity that approaches from the enamel to the dentin, to the nerve, you're out of luck. You need a root canal. So at that point, now this is when, well, sometimes people feel pain when it's in enamel and dentin. Sometimes people don't feel pain until it's all the way in. Sometimes I see a huge hole in people's teeth and no pain. So at that point, once it's entered the nerve, it starts to infect the inside of the tooth. It starts to travel through the tooth. And at the root, the base of the root, so the little the sticks that hold the tooth up, down there starts to form an infection. That infection grows. On an x-ray, it looks dark, but in reality, what you're seeing is you're seeing that there's nothing there. Abscesses eat your bone. Abscesses eat your bone. I know that sounds really gross, but if the abscess is eating your bone, don't you think that you should get rid of it because it just gets worse? So you need a root canal most of the time. There are other reasons you need a root canal. Sometimes you hit your tooth and it dies. You ever seen someone with a, a front tooth that looks brown? They probably got hit when they were younger or as an adult, got in a fight, something happened like that. And then they end up, the tooth end up dying. We call it necrosis. And after it dies, then it needs a root canal because the inside of the tooth is rotted and eventually it will get infected. There's other reasons that you might need a root canal, but those are the two main reasons. So that's why I preach so often, get your fillings done. If you get your fillings done, then you won't need a root canal. But if you let things get out of hand, and most things expensive in dentistry are things that kind of got out of hand. Maybe you ignored them. You maybe thought it was not a big deal. And then it got out of hand. Hi, Kathy P., are you affordable implants? Oh, that's a hot question. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what affordable is. You know, I'll be frank. I'll just tell you the average cost of an implant is about $3,500. That is expensive. Yes, I understand that. Look, I just said it right there. Now, when I'm saying the average cost of a dental implant is $3,500, average cost, I've seen as high as $5,500. Ooh, I think I've seen even $7,000 for implant. I've seen as low as $2,000 now. When or you got to be careful with the people who are saying $2,000 because $2,000, usually there's some sort of gimmick in my office. We do not um, itemize everything. I'm pretty much going to do what you need. So if you need a root canal, bone graft, sinus list, all the things, I'm going to do everything for that implant. And I tell people up front, I do not nickel and dime and say, well, this is going to be a little extra. Somebody asked me last week about alveoloplasty. Some dentists, I know this is a shady thing to do, like to add alveoloplasty to every extraction just to raise the price. They like to add bone graft to every extraction to raise the price. That's, you know, they just do that because sometimes they feel like they're not making enough money and they got to add things. And 
I think that's where sometimes that, that shadiness of the dentist, we try to be very, very transparent in our office. Um, I hope that helped. Hunter Z, do you have, do, do any of your patients tell you that they like visiting you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. Usually, you know, even my goal, my goal for all of my patients is always to blow away their ex expectations and for them to come out with something better than what they imagined it would be. Everybody imagines I plan to torture them. Everybody imagines that I plan to make this very painful. So all I have to do is be better than that. And I win like literally so much mean dentistry has been done in the past that all I have to be is nice. All I have to be is kind. All I have to be is compassionate. And I already win. That's how easy it is because people and dentistry is changing. Uh, dentists are more aware of the customer service aspect of it. So there are a lot of people who like to, you know, like to visit me. I think they rather have coffee with me than for me to stick them with a needle or for me to pull a tooth. But they trust me. And my patients know that I'm not going to tell them to do anything that they don't need. And I don't pressure anybody. I just... You know, you can call me a salesperson or whatever, but I just tell you what you need. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, I understand that. But I always am going to try to help people to get their work done because I think it's important for you. If you've ever had a toothache, it sucks. It sucks. So you don't want to be that person. Um, Ritik says, I wish my dentist was cute like you. Well, it, I guess it helps. <laughs> Maybe when you don't already want to see somebody, it helps if they're they're easier to look at. And if they're not easier to look at, it's like, ah, I wouldn't be there anyways. Okay, Mary Piper, are you a general dentist? I am a general dentist, but I call myself a super GP. Um, my husband actually came up with a name for me. Um, super GP simply just means that I do everything. I do everything. So even though I do um, basic dentistry, like I, I do anything. Like I always claim, like, like, I'll do a simple filling and I do dental implants. I do pull all the teeth in someone's mouth and place six implants, place nine implants. I just finished this fabulous case with a patient. Um, and we did six implants on the top and um, three implants on the bottom. And we did implant bridges and um, basically he had no teeth and I gave him all brand new teeth. I've done that several times. I do that a couple times a year. Those cases take a lot of my time. Um, because not the surgery, which I love, um, is the um, restorative part that takes, that's a challenge. That's a challenge. Adir says, hi, Adir. Hey, Tamisha, did you, you did not reckon, oh, you didn't see my live? You're like my number one fan. I always see you. Hi, Adir. Okay, Lourdes Padilla says, how do you build an implant that is 4,300? Is that reasonable? Ha, okay, so... I think it's so funny because I had a friend reach out to me that I went to high school with and he lives in California and he was asking me about his implant. And I think the dentist was going to charge him like 3,800, 4,300 is starting to be on the high side. But remember, there are other factors that go into the price of an implant. Of course, everybody's thinking about a simple situation. Okay. Simple situation. The tooth is already missing. You're going to place the implant. You're going to get a crown. Simple. Sometimes the tooth is there and it's broken. You're going to extract the tooth and you're going to place the implant and you're going to get a crown. More complicated situation. The tooth is there. There's bad bone. You have to rebuild it. You have to fix things before you even place the implant and get your crown. Or another situation, which is the upper, which is the sinus, because remember your molar teeth, and I'm going to do a video actually about dental anatomy. I don't know how many people are actually interested in that topic, but um it, your sinus sits here. So if you want to put an implant, you can't put an implant in an air pocket. So sometimes they have to do a sinus lift. That may add cost. You don't have enough bone there to add cost. You're, it's too thin. Literally, the longer you wait, the more an implant's going to cost you simply because um, you have to do more things to get it done. You know, once upon a time, I don't know how much they're still doing it now. If they, you didn't have any bone, they'll take it from your hip like in a surgery, like literally take you to the hospital, take it from your hip and put it. I mean, that's mostly people who need jaw reconstruction or been in bad accidents. So $4,300 is a reasonable cost. It's not the lowest cost, but it is reasonable. It's not outlandish. There's some costs I'm like, but I also do that for the cheap ones because I know if somebody says, we'll do your implant, they have some dental ads in, um, in Florida newspaper that says $6.99. Okay, if somebody's gonna do your dental implant for $6.99, you best believe when you get there, they're going to be saying, oh, yeah, that's only for this. If you want an implant, you got to get this, this, and that. It's like, yes, that's the implant is not good without the crown. The implant is not good without the bone. So, yeah, that's nice. That has this great low price. 
But if the low price is a scam to get you in, and once you get there, it's going to change. Now, I think somebody asked me this last last um, week. The price of dental implants is getting so much better. It's getting better mostly because insurance companies are getting on the bandwagon. Once upon a time, you couldn't get an insurance company to pay for any implants. Now you can get a little better with insurance companies paying for implants. Um, MetLife PPO. Now, I'm speaking from Florida. I don't know how it is in different states. But I know MetLife PPO, for example. You know, even Aflac and things like that. They help with stuff like that. Financing is always an issue. It's just a hard thing to navigate. It is hard for us as a dental office to navigate because dental um, insurance companies do not want to pay. You have to think about it. Um, if you're driving your car, right, and you get in a crash, now your insurance company has to pay. Why on earth do they want to pay? They don't want to pay. They don't want you to go to the dentist. It's better for them if you don't go. They just get to keep the money that you're giving them every month. Do you need a smile model? Hi, Kathy. Sorry about that. Kathy P. Oh, or Kathia. Is that right? So do you need a smile model? One to transform my smile? What? Well, you got to sit. Okay, that means if you're a smile model, that means that you think you have amazing teeth already. So I wouldn't need to transform your smile. But I would love to meet you in person if you ever. Um, I get this question all the time. I'm in South Florida in Coral Springs, if you know where that is. Um, I do have people travel to me from a lot of different places. Um, I have a patient who travels all the way from Key West, which is like six hours away. Um, and then I have people, hi, Steffi Poo. Um, I like that. I call my daughter Ari, Ari, Ari Poo. So I think that's so cute. Um, are you a dental hygienist? You said you wish you could work. With, are you a dental hygienist, a dental assistant, a dentist? What do you do for a living? Yes. So, I mean, in my office, I, I have employed all kinds of people because um, dentistry, you can learn dentistry as a dental assistant. Oh, you're a dental assistant. Oh, awesome. Are you the one that was, do I have any other dental assistants or anybody who's in dental listening right now? I'm curious if anybody's in, in the dental world, in the dental world. It's so funny. I had a patient the other day. He came in. Oh, your dental assistant and plan to go for dental hygiene. That's awesome. I actually have a, a dental, she was my patient. She came in, she was in dental hygiene school. And then after dental hygiene school, um, she came to work for us. And now she's one of my office managers. So in my Hallandell Beach office, I actually have two offices. One is in Hallandell Beach. Um, I have another dentist working there, not me. I do all of their dental implants there. So I travel there, I do bigger cases, stuff like that. Um, but dental, I, I always say sometimes, like, if I could do it again, maybe I would have went to dental hygiene first so that I could have a part-time job when I'm in dental school. But there's none. Hi, Anonymous. I have braces. Twice I've gotten them taken off and a gap opened up between my front teeth. Doctor put them back on and says, phrenectomy. You know what? It's so funny. Before, as soon as I read the gap opened up, I was about to say, ah, somebody needs a phrenectomy. And then I read this part. Doctor put them back on and says, the frenum will solve it. Do you agree? Yes and no. Okay, so, you know, I always have the temptation. Is anybody going to get grossed out if I do that? Do you see this little string that's in between on the top? That's a frenum. This is for everybody else that's not anonymous, that doesn't understand what on earth we're talking about. The reason you have a gap, people who have gaps, the reason they have a gap is because there is a muscle that goes from the, the inside of your lip, the floppy part of your lip, and it goes down in between your front teeth and it hooks around on the palate on the roof of your mouth. That is what forms a gap. Now, some of that is very, very big, and some of that is small. Some people have a high connection, meaning that for them, what end up here, they might have no gap. They'll end up in between their teeth or all the way in the back, which pushes your teeth apart. Now, sometime during the course of you having braces, it would be better if you have your phren frenum taken off. And I've done phren phrenectomies. Phrenectomies are not that painful. It sounds horrible and scary but nobody complains after that about phrenectomies. After you have a phrenectomy, then what you're doing is you're basically getting rid of the muscle that's gonna want to push your teeth back apart because teeth do like to rebound after braces. That has nothing to do with only spaces. That also has to do with crowding. Teeth want to kind of run back into the place that they were. So when you do a phrenectomy, you decrease the chance that your frenum, I mean, that your gap or your diastema for my dental professionals out there will reopen. Now, that doesn't guarantee 
Just plan to wear your retainer for the rest of your life. I tell my patients all the time, if you're not wearing your retainer, when you put it back on, if you're like, whoa, that's tight, then you need to be wearing it probably throughout the day. Um, so many different perspectives on how much you should wear your retainer. I just can't ever get it. What is, what is the way that people want to do it? Um, orthodontists keep changing because they know their patients become increasingly dissatisfied after they take their braces off. Listen, why does Smile Direct Club, why does Clear Correct, why does Invisalign have this market? They have this market because a lot of those people, I would say half of those people never had, had braces before and their teeth rebounded. So get the phrenectomy. It's worth it. Get Wear the retainer um, on upper teeth. If anybody doesn't know, this is very difficult to um, put a permanent retainer. Permanent retainer can go on the bottom teeth, but not. I keep looking around because when I'm talking to my patients, I always I grab a model and say, oh, hey, look at this and that sort of thing, but I don't have anything. Um, and I'll try to keep that. Um, my camera did not like me moving around like that. Um, so imagine this is your teeth on top of this. This is how your front teeth go. It is an overbite. Stop using overbite like it's a bad word. Overbites are good. Overjet, that's bad. Overbite's good, okay? So this is an overbite. So if you wanna put a retainer on the back side inside of here, that's okay. That's the bottom teeth. But if you wanna put a retainer in here, it's very difficult because you're gonna bite down on it and it will make it difficult for you to close. Now, some people go, like this. <laughs> if they put a retainer on their front teeth, which I've seen dentists put a small retainer between the two front teeth back, and just to hold those two teeth together. And depending on how the bite is effective, that's the only guarantee that your teeth will ever move. So, I mean, it's worth it, Anonymous, for you to at least talk to your orthodontist about it and see if that's something that's feasible for you. If it's not, it's not. But wear that daggone retainer. Listen, you save yourself thousands of dollars in retreatment. Anybody else got a question? Ooh, I was gonna oh, I was going to make a joke about the whole um, dental assisting. I have a, um, a patient that came in and he had a really bad toothache and he had an, all this stuff going on. His face was swollen. And he's like, oh, I used to be a dental assistant. I was like, okay, great. So I'm like, okay, look at this x-ray. I was like, don't you see the infection? He was like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, what? I don't understand. He just said he used to be a dental assistant. So, I mean, for me, it's like, Yes, that's a good idea, Anonymous. Get your thing. Um, yeah, because, I mean, I'm like, my assistants, oh, no, I require a lot for my assistants. I expect my assistants to understand. Sometimes I say, what do you think? I know what I think. I, I look at an extra, I can see it in two seconds. But sometimes I say that to them because I want their brains to be active. I don't want them to be robots just doing things. I want them to understand why they do what they do and what does it mean. Because if you don't understand what it means, you're just like, a technician. We're not technicians. We're medical professionals. For snap-ins, do you recommend the regular implants or the mini? You mean you must mean a snap indenture. <sighs> there is nothing wrong with minis. I used to do mini dental implants all the time, but it just kind of depends. The reason that people get mini implants, number one, for price. Some dentists charge cheaper for it, which don't understand why, because either way, you need to make sure that that's right. I, I, you know, I don't really understand. You still have to do a flap and all that stuff, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, so people do minis for price and people do minis also because their bone is so small. So if you have very little bone, because it's all about diameter. So when in dentistry, uh -huh, I love to use stuff, okay? In dentistry, when we're talking about dental implants, we're talking about two things. We're talking about length and we're talking about diameter. Right. So with with a mini, your diameter is going to be much smaller than a traditional dental implant, which would be about three point five millimeters in diameter. So once you get to two point nine millimeters, it just means smaller and smaller, the smaller and smaller. That means if you don't have a lot of bone, they need to place a small implant with that, or they're going to need to do um bone grafting and do all this expansion of your jaw and all this extra stuff. So that's what we're talking about. I think another person had asked me the other day about the size of the implants. A lot of times I'll show patients implants and they say, oh my God, this is so big. I'm like, uh, that's a model. And you're, I mean, literally if I, I'm making myself crazy today. Um, if I told you how big a dental implant is, those things are tiny. You have to imagine, they're mostly smaller than your natural teeth. Most dental implants are smaller than your natural teeth. So it's like literally, okay, nobody in the world except dentists, please forgive me if somebody else, 
is different than me. Except dentists look at millimeters like we do. We look at a half a millimeter. A half a millimeter, I say, imagine, put some sand in your mouth and see what a big deal that is, right? So for us, every tiny little thing counts. So within dental implant, we're really talking about something that is sometimes 10 millimeters tall. And I mean, maybe the top of my fingernail, to that, that's 10 millimeters tall. Hi, Jake, Jackson, Isaac. What is my favorite procedure to do? <laughs> I guess I need to stop leaning forward. Um, I think I answered this earlier. I love surgery. I love surgery. I love all surgery. I like to cut things up. I like to open it. I like to, I, I don't mind blood. None of that stuff bothers me. That's my favorite. And plus it has the biggest, when somebody goes from not having something to having something, it's a big deal. Another favorite thing that I do enjoy, which gets a lot tricky because there's so much subjective nature when it comes to that is fixing someone's front teeth. So cosmetic dentistry is not difficult. Okay. Cosmetic dentistry, the execution of it is not difficult. What is difficult is pleasing the patient because everybody has a different idea in their head of what they want to see when they look in the mirror. And sometimes when somebody goes from looking crazy, and I'm saying that with all kindness, I mean, I've had patients where their teeth are like everywhere looking crazy to looking like that, it's jarring to them and they have to spend time in it to see themselves, to see themselves in a new way. So can you imagine if your front teeth were all over the place and it's different with braces and braces, you have time for a transformation, but like when you do cosmetic works, you do crowns, I mean, in a matter of a few hours, you're already different. So when you see yourself like that, it's like, whoa, okay. And it's not always happy. I know that that sounds weird, but people are not always happy. They're just kind of like, okay. Like I have, I follow my patients on Instagram and stuff like that. And I have patients and they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. But they're on Instagram like this. <laughs> so they love it, but it takes time for you to change that. That's a big deal. I mean, I can't imagine if somebody changed my nose, even if it was nice and you'd be like, oh, this is my new you know, you, like you have to get accustomed to having that. Hi, Rock Simmer, Gal for God. Hi. I love saying hello to everybody. And I always love, love, love hearing where people are from because it just amazes me. Like it amazes me, like how far people come. Oh my gosh, it's 32 minutes already. I love doing these, by the way. Um, does anybody have any other questions or I'm going to start wrapping it up? You know how I like to blab. Listen, if you ever can't sleep at night, just put one of my videos on and just listen to me. Blah, blah, blah. What do I think about bridge work? I don't do bridges unless I, I am replacing an existing bridge. Like, so if somebody has a bridge, I, I shouldn't say that. There's exceptions to every rule. If you meet me, you'll know that I am really always trying to see what works for you and what's the best thing for you. And if that is something that you want, I'm going to see how I can make that happen. Bridges are an excellent choice if you have missing teeth in the front and you can't afford to do implants. Bridges are an excellent choice if you're replacing an existing bridge, but bridges are not a good idea if you have great teeth already and you have one missing tooth and you're gonna shave down the other two teeth. It makes no sense to shave down good teeth just to replace one tooth when those teeth are good. Now, if those teeth need other things, hey, go for it. But remember, once you have a bridge, everything is connected. You're not flossing the same. Maintenance is higher and lifetime is lower because now you have maintenance. More maintenance you have, the more. So thank you, Lourdes. Padilla. Le Liani, I'm eating cheese and grapes right now. And what are your favorite cheeses? Not a dental question, but I love cheese. I like all cheese. I like wine. I like cheese. I like all cheese. I don't know what cheese I don't like. I can't say I'm a cheese connoisseur, so I can start Gruyere and all of that. I'm not that fancy. <laughs> Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, I was in your last live. Hi, Elizabeth. Where are you from? Mega hips, mega hips. Is bone grafting and alveoloplasty the same thing? I think you asked me that. Somebody asked me about alveoloplasty. I just can't remember if I answered it. I started to... Um, answer that question the last time about alveoloplasty. And I mentioned earlier before some dentists like to throw it in. I actually did an alveoloplasty on a patient the other day simply because we were doing um, Swiss is good. North Carolina. Yes, I remember you're from North Carolina. I have a pretty decent memory most of the time. Um, 
the reason that alveoloplasty is necessary is usually when you're going to do something. Okay, that's the easiest way to. So imagine this is your bone, but your bone is not flat. Your bone is bumpy. All of your teeth sit down inside a bone, your, your jaw, and the bone goes up and down and up and down and up and down. When you lose a tooth, then the bone flattens. But sometimes you're getting work done and your bone is so bumpy that the dentist needs to grind down your bone so that they can fit whatever it is that they need to fit. Usually it's a denture. For example, the patient that I'm talking about that I did a, a veloplasty last week, and a veloplasty is like rhinoplasty. It just means that you're gonna change something else. So the aviola or the bone, the alveolar bone in your mouth, you're gonna remodel it or change the shape of it. So with an alveoloplasty, what they did, what I did is I smoothed it out because I wanted to fit a bridge, but that bridge kept bumping into the gum. So I had to cut the gum open. Sorry for the people who hate to hear stuff like that. I had to cut the bone open and then after the gum open and then shave the bone down and then suture everything back so it's smooth. Yes, you could wait for the natural remodeling of the bone over time, but sometimes you're trying to get something done and you need that bone to be the right shape. Or sometimes it's just bumpy and it's annoying the patient for some reason. Panthers, I don't know anything about um, hockey. <laughs> the Panthers um, practice rink is actually in Coral Springs. Um, Kathia, you never told me if I'm saying, I might be hiring a dental assistant, you should reach out to our office. Yes, you should reach out to us. We're always kind of looking, depending on how many hours you need. So let me know. ModernSmileCS at gmail.com. Um, what do I do to relax and unwind? Oh my gosh, I need to relax and unwind much more often. I go to the gym a lot just to relieve stress. That's a big thing for me. Somebody asked me about how I take care of my body as a dentist. Once upon a time, I did not work out at all. And then I started working out and, and dentists are notorious for having upper back pain, lower back pain, just pains in your neck and stuff like that. And once I started working out, boy, did that make a huge difference for me. Like, I like, I don't know, it just made a big difference um, for me in general. So I love to work out. I love to hang out with my kids. Um, I love to do fun things. Um, I love the beach. We just went to the beach last week um, and it was a beautiful day. Um, but the beach is awesome. So if you don't live in South Florida, Fort Lauderdale Beach is amazing. Would you ever do a show such as Married to Medicine? You know what's so funny about that? I used to live in Atlanta. And when I lived in Atlanta, one, the OB, Dr. Jackie, <laughs> she was my obstetrician gynecologist when I was pregnant with my first daughter. And um, I remember I had moved to Florida and I was watching TV and I saw Married to Medi Medicine and then they put that whole little commercial where they did. I was like, oh my gosh, that's Dr. Jackie. Because <laughs> she used to live in um, the same neighborhood because I used to live in Duluth. Um, in Georgia uh, and she used to live there and her practice is like right there like in Johns Creek area it's a very nice area in um in in Georgia but I don't know I don't know you know I don't know I don't know if I would do reality tv that's kind of it's a lot of I used to watch all of those things I don't have time to watch those things now some people need braces how the orthodontist, how does the orthodontist know when they will get rid of it? I do not know because I feel like sometimes these orthodontists, they keep people in braces so ridiculously long. I look at my patients sometimes and I'm like, why are you still in braces? I shouldn't say I do not know. I do know. So what happens is the upper parts of your teeth, the, we call it the crown portion of your teeth versus the root, which is below your gum. Sometimes they move before the roots do. And if, if orthodontist takes you out of your braces too early, what happens is your, your teeth will rebound faster because you're not really done. You appear to be done. But the roots, they need to follow along with the tops of the teeth. So I think that they're taking x-rays and making sure that you have true movement and not like a fake movement that makes you feel like it's happening, but it's not really happening. Thank you for answering all the questions. I was waiting for your adorable daughter. To Listen, I already lectured my kids who are running up, running around upstairs that they're not allowed to come in here. So no, we're not waiting for her. If you guys saw my last video, I was so nervous to make this video because I thought that I was gonna get a lot of um, flack about the fact that 
Um, I was pulling my daughter's tooth and I don't encourage people to pull their kids teeth at home. And the only reason I did that is because my kids, they love to eat apples. They're like, I, I, I say all the time to them, it's like, you're going to turn into apple tree. And I said, you know what? Stop complaining about this tooth. Just let it fall out by itself. She did not want to do that. So she was like, mommy, just take it out. So I just went and I got some topical anesthetic and I put it on there and I flipped that sucker out. Sometimes in my office, that's what I do. I put, it depends. Most of the time when I see a patient and they ask me to pull their child's tooth, most of the time I send them home and say, go eat an apple, go do something else, anything else besides making me traumatize your child. I have no interest in traumatizing anybody's children. I'm a pediatric dentist. I had a little kid the other day. She was throwing a temper tantrum in the operatory. We did gas. We did everything. She was laughing and giggling when we did the gas, but she did not want to open her mouth. I do not I do not force kids to do work. Believe me, I have no desire. I like an adult where I can reason with them and say, listen, I, this is what's best for you. I know you don't like it, but this is what's best for you. Um, Jackson says, how often do patients need dental work before they get their teeth straight? Uh, it depends. Um, depends on what they're, what they're coming from. I, I, I tell everybody, when you're going to get braces, you have to make sure these three things are addressed. Number one, you have no cavities. Number two, you have healthy gums and you're regular on your cleanings. You don't want to have gum disease. And number three, you address your wisdom teeth. Those are most important for me. If I'm going to do any clear liners or they're getting braces with another dentist, if you have, oh, this is super important. If you have a responsible orthodontist, mind you, I'm saying responsible orthodontist because there's some irresponsible orthodontists out there. Meaning a responsible orthodontist can say, do you go to a general dentist? Yes. Did you get your teeth checked before you put these braces on? Because there are orthodontists will see a big hole in your tooth and still put brackets and wires on your teeth because they are so money hungry. They want to get this money so bad. They don't want to wait for you to get all your work done. They don't want to wait till you get your wisdom teeth out to make sure that you're in order. They're just so hot to try. I had a patient, oh my goodness. She had so many cavities and she went behind my back. She went and got braces. And she ended up needing root canals. She had to take brackets off. It's like, why would you do that? Because they're trying to move your teeth. Your teeth are breaking. You have cavities. It's just, it's just not the way to go. Oh, you did not. You pulled someone's tooth. Okay, so you have to give me whose tooth, how old was the person that you pulled um, a baby tooth out? I want to know that. All right. Yeah, because like, no, literally, like in my office, if I don't have to numb a child, I won't numb a child. I had, I had this kid come in. He's 13. I've been seeing him since, and he must have been four. When he started in the office, he's like, you're not going to give me a shot, are you? And I'm like, no, I already promised you I'm not going to give you a shot. And so I was doing it and everything. And he started to feel a little bit. I said, listen, at any time, you could get a shot if you want to. And he was like, no, 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 I don't want a shot. And some kids, they hate the shot so bad that they are willing to go through just about anything. And it's crazy to me because sometimes I wonder, it's like, are you lying? Are you telling the truth? Do you not feel it? But it's saying, I love it. Listen, don't, listen, we are, I forgot you're a dentist too. We are shaping the ideas of what people are gonna think dentists are in the future. Do you understand? So many of my patients have been so traumatized by their previous dentist that they, they don't even go to the dentist. I met somebody the other day. She was so traumatized. She hadn't seen a dentist in 20 years for what they did to her when she was a teen. So when we are treating patients, we have a responsibility because we are shaping the perception of what people are going to have about dentistry in the future. And if we are constantly hurting these people and creating negative events, those people, when they're 30, 40, 50, they're not going to go to the dentist. So that 11-year-old child that you saw, if they had a pleasant experience, then they're going to say, oh, that wasn't so bad. Then in the future, when somebody says, let's go to the dentist, they won't have the same perception. I take that responsibility uh, so seriously because I don't, I don't want kids to walk around feeling like they hate the dentist on account of something I did. Now, sometimes there's nothing I can do. It's just what it is. Um, and I have to push through because it's necessary for their health. But for the most part, I want to always create as positive, as pleasant an experience as I can. Same thing is for adults. I, I don't want them to have a negative experience. Oh, my gosh, you guys got me talking. 45, 44, 33. Okay, 
Last question. True to Misha, we need to put them at ease. Once they know you will never hurt them, they are okay. There are literally people that is, there are no more truer words spoken. There are no, there are no, I read the next question and it, it made me um, forget my thing. Um, there are so many patients of mine that the first time I treat them, they're all freaked out. By the time I see them again, they don't need the Xanax, they don't need the laughing gas. They just know that you're not going to hurt them. And that means everything to them. That means everything to them. Um, of course, the tongue is related to bad breath. The tongue is like the number one holder of halitosis. Your tongue has so many. The papilla on your tongue, they hold things. They hold things. They hold. I mean, I always, whenever somebody comes to me about bad breath, I always say, we're doing a process of elimination. I had somebody ask me that question yesterday. It's a process of elimination. We're going to start with your teeth. We're going to make sure you don't have gum disease, which is the number one reason that people have bad breath. The number one reason people have bad breath is because they have gum disease. And the reason that they have bad breath is because the plaque that's in your mouth, it holds on to everything. It holds on to everything. And that odor stays with you. Imagine if you have a big row of yellow stuff. That thing is holding everything that you're eating in there too. So when you take that away, that's already thing one. So make sure you don't have gum disease. Make sure you, if you need a deep clean, you get it. Make sure you're brushing properly, that you're not using aggressive alcohol um, mouthwashes that make dry your mouth out. When you have dry mouth, you have zero stomia, you're going to have bad breath too. If you're taking medications that cause dry mouth, which a lot of them, number one cause of dry mouth is going to be medications, um, allergy medicine. A lot of those things cause dry mouth and make you all pasty and gross. Stay hydrated. You have to, you have to be your own investigator. And this has nothing to do with only dentistry. This has to do with your own body. I cannot, I can tell you so many patients of patients, cancer, um, heart disease, all kinds of things that if they were not paying to their own, paying attention to their own body, they basically diagnose themselves because their doctor missed it. Same thing with your teeth. I tell patients all the time, just because I don't see anything and you feel pain, your feelings matter. So if you still have pain, like you need to come back and see me because we need to figure this out. You know what I mean? So that's really, really important for you to do that. But you start in your mouth. If everything in your mouth is, is fixed, I don't have any abscesses infection. I don't have gum disease. I'm cleaning my tongue. I'm doing all the things I need to do. That's when we start to talk about the throat. Maybe you need to see an ENT, um, maybe gastrointestinally, something in your stomach is going on, something in your digestive tract. Hi, pork scratchy. I'm scratching. I've never seen your name before. Hi there. Once I bit into a really hard pork scratching and it busted up. <laughs> is that is that why your name is that? <laughs> it's amazing the things that people bite on. People bite on oatmeal and um, soft things and they break their teeth. All right, listen, you don't see how the lighting in here is changing? That's because the sun is setting. So I have to go soon. Um, I wanna thank you guys again. I feel like every time I do one of these, they get longer and longer. I literally did, the first one was like 20 minutes. I wanna just say I appreciate so much all the people who always come and listen to me jibber jabber for a freaking hour. Um, I appreciate all of it. And uh, make sure you um, share with your friends and family the fact that I try to do this. I'm going to try to make my normal time like 545, like 4 o'clock after I pick up my children. Thank you, Rehab, because it's so great to see like the same people. Like I really do like it. Um, I'm not just saying that. It, I do enjoy it. it. It's always interesting to me, like the things that come up and the things that people want to know, because that's always like super, super important to me. But make sure you share it with other people. Maybe they want to like um, chat with me if you just want to ask me questions like, what kind of cheese do I like? <laughs> what kind of cheese do I like? Or, or what do I do for fun? I don't mind answering any of those questions. I'm so looking forward to the new year because the new year always comes with so many things. Like if you have like dental, you know, new year's resolutions with people always have dental new year's resolutions. Let me know what they are. If you ever have, thank you, Lourdes. If you ever, um, if you ever have any questions, like more specific questions that you want to ask, you can always like put in the comments and I'll make sure that I read them. Um, but for the most part, um, I, I, I think I'm going to fall a little bit, less away from answering the comments and just answer that and just interact with you guys um and talk to you guys so that way um yes you are you are always there a dear always there um but yeah so it just is just one of those things that i enjoy so much so i'm gonna go i hope you guys have a wonderful wonderful weekend i hope everybody enjoyed their thanksgiving even people abroad i don't know if everybody 
I know there's like boxing days and things like that. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Shame on you guys. You guys kept me for almost one hour this time, but you know, I enjoyed it. I know what time it is. All right. Have a wonderful day and see you next week. And don't forget to watch the video that I'm going to put out on Sunday. Have a great day. Bye everyone.